Good afternoon. Yeah, sorry, it was a problem with uh, sound. Uh, okay. Mm, before starting, let me ask you. So I send you a task with a summary. So have you received any mails? Yes, we have. Okay, do I have any questions about that? Did I get it right? Uh, uh, well, you also wrote us the task, right? With uh, yes. So in a PDF file, you can find the instruction how to proceed to the task. So just so you need to pick one of the papers. There are, I think, seven or eight of them. There are some like recent papers which I found and uh, yeah some yeah, a bit older so you need to read it uh, and, and then just write a short summary for one one two pages if just basic answers on what, what is the paper about and uh, that what is the research question and then in the end, maybe what do you think about it and how it could be useful in real life examples or future research questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in this case, I have a question about methodology. So I briefly um, scammed uh, several articles, uh, yeah. which you have uh, sent us. Yes. And I've got a question about. Uh, how to say the depth of understanding. So, uh, if we can't understand some uh, math constructions, is it okay? Because I saw uh, several difficult uh, constructions there. No, it's okay. You need to understand just what's going on. So, under methodology, I mean that, uh, yeah, if it's or less or just some regressions or it's like general method of moments or just survey, I don't know what they use. They normally write that which methodology they use in case they use it, yeah, because it could be maybe theoretical paper. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so it's okay if I don't understand, I don't know, uh, every symbol of this article. Let's see. So. No, that's for sure. That's yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah, just two weeks, so you don't need to go deep to the literature. If there is some formulas from previous research, that's that's fine. You don't need to understand. You need to understand the main uh, result and what it's... So what is the real-life implication and w what was actually done uh, in terms of the question which can be stated in, in real world. Like, if you write down the model and there is some result that example x uh, always uh, larger than y it's it's not a economic result right so then you mm -hmm. need to say for example that uh, such persons are always better off than another uh, it's, it's just example okay hmm. yes okay so we need uh, to see it uh, from the more you know kind of economic position not like uh, yeah okay yeah sure it's it's not a like really important and weighted task so like 10 percent so that's um i don't know how i would often that you're reading some papers in 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 that uh, bachelor program i don't know we shall definitely read some of them during our term paper and uh our diploma work yeah that's uh that's for sure so maybe some practice will help so that's uh that's happened with me then some teachers push us to to read more papers that helps to to really work on your 
a diploma or whatever and you're doing. Yeah, so it's fine. But you have uh, access, yeah? So you check that you have access to all folders. Uh, yes. Okay, great. I wasn't sure. So then, uh, I guess that's it. So you have two two leaks for that. I think that's that's enough. So I will. I saw you. Yeah, you can send it to my email. I, I stated that's fine. Well, let's let's start our next lecture. Mm. So I will turn on recording. Okay, now everything is recording. And uh, today, firstly, we will brief talk about our uh, seminars results. So remember from the previous class, we're talking about the one site uh, platform. The, um, so we have a, a distribution of agents with different tastes uh, to platform uh, who distributed an interval from from zero to one. And then uh, theta is distributed such that uh, the agents with higher theta, they like to join the platform more. And this is the, the general uh, case of our social welfare function. So then, yeah, you remember before the move to the specific case of a utility function, we discussed the general. So it's, it's increasing in theta, it's increasing in n, and uh, that's what we know. And you can see here that, uh, yeah, so they have the, and the part which uh, represents the, the consumers who joined the market. This was from theta head, the indifferent tangent. Uh, so then uh, theta hat equals to one minus n in our uniform distribution and then to, to one. So these agents who join the market and that's, uh, so the utility of joining and then they, they pay. Um, and um, here on the right uh, side, the, the profit of uh, of platform. So we have n agents who join, and then price and uh, end costs. I'm sorry, probably he's supposed to be the n expected, because it could be different concepts. So um, I don't know why it's not. Yeah, it's not uh, noted here. Yeah, so it's it's not the same n. So because the they can use Nash equilibrium or. Uh, other concepts, so it could be different uh, and expected. So then, um, yeah, if we uh, assume our uh, utility function that it's uh, that we have different days to join the platform, and then uh, the same network effects for for users uh, who join. And yeah, we assume this uh, assumption about parameters. So then our welfare function will be integrated to uh, that expression. So which we did actually on the exercise session. Yeah, uh, yeah, one more point about uh, the welfare function that you can see that here the, the price uh, which pays uh, Consumers with negative sign, uh, exactly the same that uh, receive the platform with uh, positive uh, sign, so which is obvious. So then it cancel out, and this is just redistribution of welfare uh, across the agents. So it doesn't play, play any role in the social welfare function. Then they calculated that. Um, what is optimal in terms of social welfare is uh, this expression. Yeah, one minus C divided one minus two B. And you remember from a monopoly case, so that was one minus C divided my one on divided on one minus V, and then multiplied by one half, which is less. Uh, then uh, what a social planner will do, so if I have a formula here, yeah. 
So then uh, we can see that if, uh, if there will be the monopoly, and then uh, the number of uh, joint agents will be lower than what would social planner do. So what does it mean in terms of economic situation? So what the, the economist will do in, in this case? You mean in terms of uh, regulation? What? Yes, so like, what is the task here for economists normally? It's more uh, the task uh, for um, government uh, departments to somehow ban this monopoly or not? Uh, yeah, there could be uh, some some regulations regarding uh, monopoly. So then, what it could be it could be some taxation, right? So it could be tra some transfers. So we can think about how to to increase the numbers to to the optimal one, because again, the social planner doesn't care about the um, redistribution of wealth between agents right here. So we will, we would like to increase the number of agents to uh, to change the the total welfare, so increase it. So then we are probably uh, would like to uh, to talk about some taxes and transfers. Then, uh, but this is just a note. So another another question: Why it is so? Why it is optimal in terms of social welfare to to have a, a larger number of of users than in monopoly. It means that users uh, get um, how to say um, more extra utility from the additional user uh, than the monopoly pays for it. Yeah, so then, then the, another user joined the market, so what happens? Each other uh, users uh, get some additional uh, utility, but m Monopoly uh, is starting, I guess, to lose some profits. But those profits uh, are less than the gain to utility. Yeah. So then, I guess it wasn't only me uh, who stopped seeing you, right? <laughs> yeah. Just a sec. Well, oh, okay. Okay.
let's continue. Mm, so what was mentioned, uh, correct. So then you join the market, then you, you increase uh, the utility of uh, any other agent um, on the platform. And here I will ask you to, to remember yeah, two words, the, the network effect, so that um, the effect of the agent who joined the market on other agent. Yeah, it's called network effect, which is stated on the slides, and, and we already talked about this. So then this you're supposed to remember that uh, so that uh, when an agent joined the market uh, in in, in this um, topic, so then there are network effects because the utility of other agents depends on the number of agents on the market. So then mm, what we can say about the network effects uh, in this case, So then, uh, network effects uh, induce the, the positive externalities of it. It uh, can be seen from our utility function, that the utility function is increasing in N. So that means that uh, if we add more agents, then the utility increase. So that it's uh, positive externalities. We will talk to today about the, the negative uh, externalities uh, as well. So then, um, so maybe you have any questions about the, the welfare and how we talk about welfare. Okay, let's uh, let's move to next topic. So externalities, or oh, yeah. So network externalities effects uh, with social welfare was uh, related to uh, the, the one-site monopoly, which we discussed uh, last lectures and uh, our work session. And next we move to uh, different platform types. And we just will discuss today mostly um, how we can um, differentiate platforms and uh, what different types we can we can discuss so the first uh, type of the platform uh, which we will discuss today it's uh, exchange so it's uh, it's a simple uh, platform so then we have buyers and sellers or we can call them buyers and sellers so that um, in, on, on one side buyers and on the other sellers, they are searching for best uh, prices and uh, suitable deals uh, on the market and then We can't hear you, I guess. We lost you for a second. I'm sorry. So maybe I will. Check. Yeah, I can. I can use another Wi-Fi from. Yeah, in, in case it will repeat once again, I will use another uh, connection. So then, a uh, question to you is uh, why the platform is important here. So if you're talking about sellers and buyers, <laughs> yeah, here you can you can see the uh, the bold uh, uh, words that are important, so they can help you to answer. So what is the purpose of of the platform? Why it may exist? Because uh, it just 
makes uh, this process easier for the both sides. So it's really hard to find a seller or a buyer like directly. So we just need a place where we can do it like, I don't know, <laughs> in a civilized way, in an organized way. Yeah, so it's much more efficient than uh, searching for best uh, price or uh, best match um, between seller and buyer. So uh, then um, if we observe the two-sided markets, uh, so we cannot apply the ghost theorem. I guess I mentioned it once again, uh, once already, so that there is no um, the transaction between between uh, sellers and buyers for best search will be uh, inefficient in case of uh, operating without the platform. And uh, then, um, which uh, examples of such a platform you can provide? We discussed them already on the previous, uh, I guess, uh, lesson. Something like Amazon, Avito, something like that. So that's about uh, exact buyers, buyers and uh, sellers. Uh, what about different search and uh, matchmakers? different uh, dating apps and something else. Yes, so first one is matchmakers, that uh, dating service and uh, employment agency. So the second one is uh, traditional exchange, so that uh, could be anything which you can uh, sell and buy everywhere. So even uh, auction houses, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's which is quite old, right? Can be observed as a platform, a two sided platform. So then you have uh, sellers, and yeah, sometimes the sellers uh, wants to be hidden, for example. So that if you want to be hidden and you can, you want not to be observed from the point of uh, buyer, so that. Uh, the auction house is quite important, right? Because without uh, this uh, platform or organi organization, you cannot be hidden. So you can exactly, you should exactly approach the, the buyers and show that, okay, that's me who own this thing and I want to sell it. But if you want to be uh, not uh, publicly known as a, as a owner of, of some, uh, culture, uh, whatever painting or something else, uh, so that uh, you can use auction house. Uh, have you uh, already studied auctions? Um, some game theory. Uh, I guess we only uh, studied auctions during our of the game theory but it was like an ordinary auction and no. uh, another type so not really in depth we should have uh, started them uh, during our um, mechanisms design but we had not <laughs> okay we will discuss some auctions as well here it's, it's quite a nice topic so then, uh, yeah, then uh, there are some brokerage services as well, so that we um, can talk about publishers, travel services, ticket services, whatever. Then uh, it is quite um, uh, inefficient to search, for example. Uh, 
if if you have if you wrote a book book uh, or some, um, some article, you don't know exactly who would like to read it. Uh, so then you need to publish it and to do it by your own, it's quite uh, expensive. Uh, maybe now it's, it's not so. And uh, for sure, it depends on uh, how much uh, items you want to to receive as a as an outcome. But then you don't know if it's uh, if it's a good book, uh, who would like it, uh, which category of uh, mm, of readers would like to read it. And then all these problems are solved by publishers, so they they deal with a uh, huge numbers of different books, so they know uh, which which shops would like to buy which book, uh, which uh, uh, for example, which uh, consumers of which uh, age uh, would like to read about a certain topic, uh, so they better knows how to. Uh, advertise the, the certain topic. So then uh, you come and you sell uh, your book to publisher, uh, not the, so you sell the rights to publish it. Um, so then you have uh, money from exactly one organization, so you, you don't need to collect uh, the money from every, every buyer. And then uh, publisher redistribute uh, the book among different shops uh, and, and then uh, we can consider the shop as a previous uh, type of the platform as a uh, traditional exchange so that you have publisher on one side and then you have uh, buyers or readers on, on the other side and then another platform comes uh, to the market and then we can discuss some effects there. So then you can see that uh, uh, the, the platforms itself can be as a plot of as a part of the another platform, right? So and then let's move. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, and Any question. Yes, I have a question, and it's a specific question about the name of this category. Why taxonomy? Uh, taxonomy, it's not about taxes, right? <laughs> taxonomy, it's uh, like different types. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I, I was confused a bit uh, when I, I saw, saw this word. I like, oh, it's supposed to be something with taxes. No, not really. Mm. Yes, uh, so it's like classification. Uh, so then, uh, the next type uh, we will discuss additionally, uh, and specifically, it's um, advertising uh, supported media. And this is a huge uh, piece of platforms and uh, huge piece of markets with uh, uh, yeah, huge money cycling around there. Mm. Well, uh, from my perspective of view, I, I never thought about that. Mm, okay, the why we should think about these markets as a as a markets which um, mm, uh, they're inside a lot of money cycling, and uh, uh, why we should care about such markets so much, uh, but. Uh, uh, then you can see that uh, in, in real uh, in real world uh, the news, uh, yeah, especially maybe now and uh, last uh, few years with COVID and new regulations, new uh, new policies, uh, you always want to be and um, in the current context, uh, you want to read news uh, uh, quite uh, quite efficient and quite fast. And uh, what is the the sources of the news uh, then play crucial role in in our uh, real world life? So that's uh, that's a mechanism how uh, yeah, the 
a certain organization or whoever can affect uh, the real uh, world. So then, um, then uh, there are a lot of money cycling, and then economists are supposed to think about how this, uh, um, mm, how to deal with uh, such a markets. So and. Uh, for examples, yeah, magazines, newspapers, television, whatever web portals, uh, online news, uh, all of these are two-sided platforms. And can someone discuss and describe uh, why this is a two-sided market? And who are the sides? I guess one side um, is uh, represented by actually the users, and another side by advertisers. Uh, yes, uh, so that's uh, probably from the slides, uh, and uh, uh, so and how they operate, and uh, what is the connection? Why? Mm. Yeah, okay, so I guess it's easier to um, to see it on an example. So, for example, of Facebook. So, users, they need, I don't know, a place to communicate uh, and uh, to see some news as well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they need this product and advertisers they need uh for the users to see their ads yeah uh so platform uh can uh mediate there it can uh, uh give uh those users a place to communicate and to read news and advertisers a place to advertise actually and take some percentage for its services, I guess. Yeah, mostly correct. Uh, so, and uh, maybe additional question, can you imagine another site uh, on that platform? So you mentioned just uh, users uh, or readers who are interested in uh, communication and uh, so if you're talking about media, so with some news or content, which is uh, allocated on the platform. So, but we will talk yeah, about examples uh, a bit, uh, a bit later. So then, uh, what is different here from uh, from the previous uh, examples is that uh, so the the agents or the readers, uh, viewers or whoever, they join the platform to to get access. To some product which already allocated on the platform. So normally, the the readers they don't need the advertisers on on the other side, so they are not interested in advertisers. And then advertisers uh, they they pay the platform uh, to to get access to to users and to show them their suggestions. So and, and that's how the the platform operates. But uh, then the missing one, one more hmm, puzzle uh, piece here, like the content creator. Yes. So the the content creators can be the the other side, right? So that's, um, yeah. So that um, let me. So then, yeah, so that uh, the platform can create the, the content by, by themselves. So this could be the, if you're talking about a uh, newspaper, then they have um, someone who collect the news or write the news uh, so that they create the context and, and they by themselves publish it on, on their uh, platform. And um, they could be different, uh, and different sites as uh, content creators, uh, so, and uh, for example, the streaming services, 
they can just buy the content uh, from there and show it uh, to, to users, viewers, readers. So um, then, uh, firstly, the platform needs to to build the the contact uh, the content on, on the platform, so that that's that's the first uh, step uh, in this market. So there's supposed to be some content on the platform available. Then this attracts. Uh, uh, viewers, users, or readers who uh, come comes to the platform and uh, get access, and then this um, this numbers of uh, users or readers attract uh, the advertisers on the other side. Do you see some problems here? Like the complex uh, scheme of profit distribution or something like that, no? Uh, yeah, what is related? So that uh, uh, the timing is so that you firstly need to create the content, then you attract, uh, then you attract in uh, the users or readers, and then users and readers, then they have uh, enough number of. Uh, on the platform, because if you have just only you know 10, 15 uh, followers or, or readers, then it's not interesting for advertisers. So then you need to collect the numbers of uh, of users, and then you attract advertisers, and you need then collect uh, enough number of advertisers to receive the profit, which is will be enough to to exist uh, for the platform. So yeah, I think uh, everyone already can, f can feel this uh, this problem, but uh, let's let's leave it for a mm, few more slides. And uh, uh, the next question is: uh, if we will consider the the relationships between Two sides. So you remember from previous uh, types, the sellers and buyers. So how we call them, sellers and, and buyers. It could be yeah, not exactly if we sell and buy some product uh, that uh, they want to best deal, best match, or whatever. So they are interested in each other. But here we have kind of a different situation, right? So what we can say about the effects on this platform? Can we say that uh, actually our content makers, uh, they are not really interested in uh, viewers, they are interested in viewers because it will attract uh, advertisers, right? So it's like the circle. Oh, right. So, the, so sometimes you can sell the, um, for example, if you're talking about YouTube or something like that, so you can sell the premium uh, accounts and gain some profit as well. But that's actually, uh, if I remember the numbers uh, from this year or like uh, a few months ago, someone calculated the number of premium accounts on YouTube or it was publicly posted. Uh, and only 1% of uh, YouTube users buying these uh, premium accounts. But still it makes some, uh, some profit uh, quite a huge profit for for Google. Uh, well now, just uh, let's thinking about the readers and adver advertisers. Uh, so, as a reader, would you like to have a larger number of uh, advertisers on the platform? Mm. 
No, we're not interested in them, only in content. Yes, sir. And, and, and the advertisers are normally interested in, in large number of uh, readers and users. So now they can uh, see that we have uh, negative externality, externalities and negative effects uh, from the advertiser side on uh, the, the readers and user side. So because if we will increase the number of uh, advertisers, so then which, uh, which will increase the number of ads uh, on, on the website, probably um, yeah, we, we can think about some regulations later, but uh, normally it will increase the number of uh, ads. This will decrease the utility of the users from joining the platform and this will decrease the number of users. So then mm, the platform will face such a problem as well. So then you uh, increase the number of ads in your website or whatever it's newspaper, then it will decrease the number of readers, which will decrease number of uh, uh, advertisers on the platform. So that's uh, kind of a, another problem of, of such platform, with which uh, supposed to be careful. But, uh, then let's let's move on. So the next uh, type uh, we will discuss it's uh, software platforms. So then uh, this is the platforms which uh, connects uh, developers and users so that uh, uh, there is some uh, software um, platform which is used by users and developers and then developers uh, knows which uh, uh, for which software platform uh, developed uh, the apps such that uh, the users uh, can use and buy these apps um, for software. So sometimes you can face the, the examples then uh, platform provides uh, some services uh, for developers to, to create. But normally it's, yeah, it's, it's always happens like they provide some instructions. Uh, for example, Apple, then Apple announced the new OS or mm, I would call the so that uh, so then they uh, announced new uh, OS. They have published the the guides how to to write uh, the applications and if they. Uh, I think you are familiar with a new iPhone, and then they have this uh, island, a dynamic island, uh, yeah, in, in this generation, so that uh, they write down the, the additional software, and then they publish their the instructions how the the outside developers can uh, use it, and already you can download some apps which will. Uh, and deal with it and somehow play around this uh, feature. And so that, that's uh, exactly the example when the platform has some software and they provide some uh, services for developers how to, to use the software to, to develop some apps and uh, use some features there. So then, uh, can you give me some uh, examples? Well, okay. Let me let me say uh, some more properties about the the platforms, such that. So, what is important here is that users. Uh, can run these applications only 
on the same software platform. Yes, so we should think about uh, that uh, the product which is provided by the platform or itself the platform uh, yeah, is uh, restrict uh, restricting the uh, the agent's uh, availability, but uh, then guarantee the to developers the, that uh, these users will use exactly this software, so you can provide them uh, suitable uh, applications. So then, uh, but at, at the same time, this restricts the, the developers that they can sell their apps only to, to, to the users who use the same uh, the same software uh, platform. And this guarantee the, the buyers uh, and the users that uh, you already have some developers who working on the applications. So then can you think about some, some examples? We already discussed some of them. Maybe additional one. I thought of the market of uh, video games, but not like uh, Steam or something, because you can actually run uh, Steam games, well, not on the uh, Steam software, I guess. So uh, Windows, it's not uh, their software, but or not, or oh, I misunderstood it. So Windows is itself as a is a software, right? Yes. So it can be a platform because you you have as developers which write down the uh, the application for Windows, for example, my, uh, Microsoft Office. Yes, indeed. But but that's uh, that's a bit tricky example because Microsoft Office. Uh, uh, owned by Windows, right? Mm. And then, uh, actually, it, it's an interesting example because uh, last year um, there was some regulations about that uh, you're supposed to to provide uh, the same uh, the same conditions for different developers. And then Microsoft uses their monopoly power in terms of uh, their platform to install uh, the Office and provide some um, some other apps uh, already installed on on your software and on your PC. Then you buy it uh, from the store. And there was some regulations that uh, that should be forbidden. Okay, so now we discussed the um, the windows. So then you mentioned the uh, some game, but uh, for example, uh, Steam uh, does it uh, well. Can there be an example here or not? Uh, so it's it can be probably I think so because uh, I I think there exist some games which can be downloaded only from Steam. Probably. Yes, but it's not like the general rule. So there are other stores with the same games. Uh, yes, so then uh, then you have not a monopoly, right? So it's yes. like uh, different platforms, but still you need any platform to, to download it. it. It's not like um, you have a disk and, and then you just uh, install it. Mm -hmm. So some other examples. It is an example here, right? Yeah. Okay. So I already mentioned Apple, right? So then we can iPhone. 
and or any Android, right? So, but that's that's about this uh, software. But then we can think about the smartphones itself as a platform, which provide the the space there. You can mm, you can install some apps, but yeah, then you're supposed to think about Android or iOS. Mm. Some other examples. Okay, so then uh, we discussed uh, operating system, smartphones a bit. So then uh, we can talk about video game platforms such as uh, um, Xbox and uh, PlayStation, right? And uh, which is more physical uh, example. And uh, then uh, Steam was uh, mentioned as a uh, online platform. So they can talk about digital music devices um, as well. So that that's more uh, ancient, maybe example, uh, which can be imagined here. So if we are talking about CD players or even older something with uh, uh, previous generation music devices. So then we have producers of uh, CD uh, discs, and, and then we have a device which can exactly deal with uh, CD discs and, uh, and other stuff. So then, uh, any questions uh, here? No. Oh. OK, so then. Then let's discuss uh, uh, another question. So then uh, we can uh, we have already mentioned uh, the that uh, the effects can be positive or negative. Then we are talking about the advertisers and users on media uh, platforms so then can you can see here you can see here the uh, the simple shame of uh, two sided platform so then we have some platform in between so then we have uh, two groups of uh, users or agent uh, on one side and on another side and then we can talk about uh, intergroup effects or intergroup externalities and intergroup uh, effects and uh, externalities. Uh, so then they can be positive and uh, or negative or it could be the case. Then you have uh, then you have positive and negative effects at the same time. So hmm. let me actually ask you. So if you if you are thinking about the um, music streaming service, so what what is going to be Spotify or Yandex Musica? Can you please describe the sites? Who are the sites? And then uh, mention which effects exist and which effects are positive or negative. Okay, let's start from the beginning. So we are talking about music uh, music streaming service. If we take Spotify or Yandex Musica, uh, who are the sites? Well, users who want to listen to music and 
actually, I guess, uh, the artists. Yes, so then uh, then you have some musicians or groups on, on our one side who create uh, the content and can uh, uh, publish it uh, on the platform. And then we have uh, listeners or users on the other side who can listen the music. Okay, then first uh, let's focus on uh, intra-group effects. So if we are talking about the listeners, I don't think that they have any kind of intergroup. Oh, sorry. Yes, intergroup uh, externalities. So, if you are if you are a user of Yandex Musica and your friend is a user of the Yandex Musica, would you would it have some effects? Not really. Yeah, just there probably will be not, uh, there are no negative effects because uh, you cannot think about some, some negative maybe. Uh, so then we can think about that uh, if you use the Yandex Musica, you can send to your friend the link to the music which you like. And, and then uh, your friend supposed to open it exactly on the same platform, probably, so if you send him music on Spotify, then you need your friends to be familiar with this platform and are already installed. So then there could be some positive effects because you can share, you can discuss, you can like something. Would you agree? Yes, indeed. Uh, when if we are talking about the um, musician side and about intra-group effects? They definitely should have some negative externalities. Yes, uh, so they can t talk about the competition, right? So that if... Um, if you already have some music band which is uh, close to your music, right? So that's, which is not really differentiated from you. So then there will be competition. But uh, could they think about the positive effects? Maybe the positive effect of the competition. So it's um it gives some incentives uh, for the groups and you know to maybe work harder or something like that uh not really <laughs> so I, I think the competition can be just just negative effect but i already mentioned that the groups can be of different types or the music can be on different directions But it should be like the intergroup effect. Like the more oh, yeah. interactions we have, the the more our customers uh, enjoy our platform. No. Yeah, but that's uh, intergroup, right? Effect. Yeah. Another side, but uh, yeah, it's it's could be mentioned that uh, your kind of example that if you have the different directions, then it's uh, maybe help you to to grow as a musician so you can exchange with other groups something, so some types of music, so if you can take some elements from, from other groups uh, and, you know, uh, develop your, your product more. Mm. So okay, let's uh, let's then discuss intergroup effect. So can you formulate uh, the effect which we already mentioned? Like that, the diversity of the 
Jana's uh, among the groups uh, positively affects uh, users' experience. Well, the utility, I guess. Yeah, so because the users can find the better match, right? So if you have uh, different groups, it it will make the consumers better off. So we can choose among uh, larger numbers of groups. Uh, so that uh, that's a positive effect. Uh, if we are talking about the musicians, can you think about some negative effect? From the uh, groups to the users? Yes. Maybe it's some kind of menu cost. Like it's hard to choose between, uh, I don't know, 100 groups, but it's uh, almost impossible to choose from 1,000 groups. Maybe. Um, and I was thinking about that there could be some uh, specific uh, music platform which, be, which focused on, for example, jazz. And this platform was a, um, was just for jazz. And there was a fans of jazz who listened the music and then they started some, some other musicians. Yeah, that can be the, the negative effect because currently you have only the users who like jazz and they like this platform because they came and they listen jazz. But then you add something else, they dislike this because they come here only to focus on jazz and then, for example, they use another platform to listen something else. Um, yeah, so and, and then uh, if we are talking about the listeners, so which, uh, which effect they induce on, on the other side? Well, I guess uh, if the groups get the, mm, well, uh, get their, um, the, it's not salary, I don't know, <laughs> their uh, payment uh, based on the number of um, of views or like played songs, well, it's like uh, the more clients uh, you, you get, the more profit you get. Yeah, so you can think just about simple positive uh, network effect. So yes. Uh, there is some oh, one example, one more example about yes, yeah, so that uh, about intergroup and uh, intergroup effects. <clears throat> so then let's uh, let's move on. So then we have. Uh, to discuss this uh, problem, which I mentioned uh, before. Uh, so you remember, it, it works especially with, uh, mm, with uh, advertisers and, uh, and readers with uh, news uh, media example. So then you firstly need to create the content and to create the content, you probably need to have some uh, resources or money so then you attract uh, users readers or listeners and then uh, the higher number of uh, users attracts advertisers and only then you have enough a number of advertisers you you are gaining some profits to to invest uh, into into your contact once again 
So that this can uh, firstly take some time, and, and secondly, you already need to to have a, a large number of advertisers to create a, um, probably better content and and then invest in this. So then uh, this uh, problem called chicken and egg, so that uh, it can be considered as a coordination problem as well, because if uh, the platform users and advertisers will agree together at the same time that, okay, uh, we, will, we will create a platform right now, uh, all the agents will join, who will join, uh, will join right now, so then advertisers will join, will join right now, and then we will make profit. Uh, starting today, um, which is uh, yeah, would be the best for everyone, uh, and that's uh, the coordination problem because everyone would like to, but then uh, there is no information that, uh, for example, that uh, advertisers uh, doesn't know how much agents will be, then the platform will be built out, so then you don't know. And you will know this only, then the agents will join the platform. So then, uh, if you're talking about indirect network externalities, that, well, uh, here's the example of buyers and sellers. So then if you have more buyers in the platform, then this increase the number of sellers and these increase the number of buyers and, and so on. So then this works uh, from one perspective as a snowball effect, so that if you make more buyers, this makes more sellers. But uh, on the other side, it means that uh, to have a large number of buyers, you need to have a much uh, more number of uh, sellers and, and, and so on. Yeah, so that uh, on another side we have this chicken and egg problem, and uh, this is a problem of the platform. This is uh, uh, what uh, the platform supposed to solve to exist. And can you think about some solutions how the platform can attract? sellers or buyers? Uh, yes, it's easier to attract uh, sellers. <clears throat> well, in this case, you just, I don't know, uh, you just say something like, okay, uh, in first month, we are not going to have like, I don't know, one million followers, but uh, if we don't, we just pay you like some, um, some desired sum and if we have enough users you just get the percentage and uh, in this case uh, buyers will be there because you already have a big um, base of sellers no uh, well, yeah, so you, then you start to operate, then you have to provide mostly free service to sellers, so that showing them that, okay, firstly, it's it's just the opportunity for you to sell something, so why wouldn't you join uh, if it's free? Mm, when, but then you need to increase the number of users as fast as possible to make a profit. So then we can think about the examples was already provided during the first lecture. Uh, for example, with taxi services or food delivery services that uh, then you firstly join the market, you receive some bonuses like free uh, first drive or free pizza. And, and then during the, um, the first months, you still may have some uh, some good deals, like buy two pizzas, receive the third one for free. 
uh, that's um, mostly provided not by uh, uh, producers itself, but uh, by the platform. So that the platform pays uh, to producers for the product, so to attract more more users, and then the platform collect enough uh, enough number of users. Uh, then uh, it can uh, operate efficiently. So, uh, for example, uh, if we are um, talking about uh, hardware product uh, enters uh, the market, so just um, if we can think about the new gaming console. So then. Uh, Mm. Then the consumer don't know about uh, this new console, and they don't know about the the games which uh, will be available on this console. And uh, then at the, at the same time, so you mm, you announce this platform, but then software producers don't know how much the, the users will be. And who will uh, install um, this uh, hardware on the platform? And and then the question: What is the source of uh, coordination problem here? I already mentioned it several slides before. What is the important word here? Make some guarantees or not? Yes. So that's uh, what does it mean? That's so. so in other words, uh, okay. Go ahead. We we need uh, somehow to uh, save both sides from their uncertainty. But it requires some additional funds, I guess, for the platform. Okay, you you go so uh, you go a bit complicated. So that um, what is missed here is the the information. So there is a lack of information in the situation. So that uh, uh, that software providers that the platform needs to to deal with it so that uh, the the producers they don't know about uh, the buyers and the buyers don't know about the producers the information uh, who would like and who who has a possibility to write down the software or new games um, to be suitable for exactly this console and then uh, developers don't know how much users would like to to buy this console because they don't know their taste. And who knows better is the platform because platform can aggregate the, the demand and can aggregate the supply so they can learn about this. Uh, so that's uh, the information is um, is quite important here. That's why in real world you you always observe this uh, information that okay we are one million now because for platform it's important to to announce this information we are one million uh, so that means that yeah we have one million one million users uh, whom you can use to uh, advertise your product or. Yeah, there are one million friends with, with which you can connect on Facebook. So uh, use us more and more. And uh, that's uh, what uh, the platform wants to, to make uh, more public and, and allowed. So then let's a bit uh, talk about several platforms last um, uh, last minutes um, 
So, if we are talking about two different platforms but operating on the same market, can you give me example? Let's go with the social media. Okay. Well, Which? I don't know, like Facebook, Instagram, Contact, and some others. Uh, well, they were working on the same market at some point. Yeah, okay, let's talk about Facebook and Contact here. I will try to, to figure out this example. So then, uh, here we talk about the single homing and multi homing agents. So that uh, you can see that uh, on, on this side, uh, we have the agents who join only one platform and the agents who join uh, both platforms. So let's say there are, um, there are two platforms that which compete uh, with each other. And uh, the platform always uh, think about how to make the profit. So then, uh, uh, for example, you you have a agents who join Contact and Facebook simultaneously, and yeah, you use both platforms, and then you have uh, just those who connected to Contact. What you can think about the difference between these agents? They just have uh, different preferences. Yeah, so the agents probably has strong preferences to use Contact. The agent who the agent who joins the platform Contact maybe dislike Facebook or whatever. So then uh, from each agent, the platform can make the more profit. From those who uh, like only the, their platform? Uh, yeah, probably. Because uh, for single homers, uh, the platform has kind of a monopoly, yes, to, to access. So then uh, the platform can make more profits from uh, single homers and uh, they can now oh, here is a, a bit more uh, a bit different logic. So like. Uh, uh, so that um, the the agent who joined one platform, they can uh, join the another platform. So that uh, so then you probably you like uh, the platform more. Uh, then uh, your taste is to this platform. So that uh, increasing the price for these agents, you will. Uh, you will change their preferences uh, between platforms. So then, uh, if you will try to extract some profits from uh, single homers who are mm, um, who are join only one platform, so then uh, they can uh, rejoin to to another platform in case you will decrease the increase the price on, on one platform. So then somehow the single homers uh, has a um, bargaining power compared to multi homers. So, and those who already connected to platforms, uh, they um, can be considered as a uh, as agents from whom the platform can extract uh, relatively more uh, gains. Uh, and so on. So then, uh, any questions here? Yes. Uh, still, this uh, conclusion uh, seems uh, strange. And shouldn't we just be talking in terms of uh, 
elasticities of uh, d demand here. It uh, well, it would really depend on the preferences. Like uh, if I'm using a uh, the contacty, even if uh, the contacty puts like add every five seconds, uh, am I uh, ready to like? Uh, throw away my 10 year old profile and go to facebook or i don't yes, care really yes that's, uh, that's that's a bit problem with uh this example uh mm, so yeah mm, i think with contact and facebook it's it's not a really suitable example here because well uh then you're mm, gaining some 10 years profile then Mm, it's kind of platform has a bargaining power on on you, but then you, it's, yeah, like definitely you're right about uh, elasticity, so that we can, we mm, should talk about what is, what is the effects if the platform increase slightly the price to join the the platform, and. Uh, we will talk about the exact uh, example and how this works later with newspapers and uh, news media platforms. It's the additional topic we will uh, discuss later. But here you are mostly right with the contact and Facebook. It's it's not really suitable example. Mm. For exact effect, you need to take the the model and calculate, uh, which will prevails. Because, yeah, if you use the platform and you gain some, uh, uh, if you just not uh, get access to to other site, uh, which is uh, probably supposed to be the same on the platform, if you have your friends on on contact here, which are not represented on Facebook, it's it's a bit different situation. But even if uh, we are talking about some other platforms, let's say I don't know Uber and uh, Yandex Taxi, right? So uh, it should be easier. Uh, still, if I'm using, uh, for example, only Uber, uh, so what uh, d does it mean for the platform that it can get more for me than? Uh, uh, from my friend who is using them, I know, uh, from time to time, like one time Uber, one time Yandex Taxi, or not? Uh, so that, um, let's think. So then we, we are using Uber and, uh, so if you have, that's probably about, so if you are already paid to, to the access to, to the, to the platform, so that's uh, that's not about uh, because if you're talking about Uber and and uh, Yandex Taxi, you are you have probably zero cost to connect the platform, right? So you just download the app, and that's uh, cost nothing for you. But if you already paid the access to some platform, so that you subscribe to the platforms and and you paid uh, your fee. So then, uh, if if there are users who would like to join both platforms, uh, they uh, kind of don't have a choice between platforms. Then increasing the the price, uh, you just measure how they would like to join the the platforms at all. Yeah, that may be bad formulation. Maybe not. I don't know how to actually. Like, uh, like uh, uh, they have only two options. Uh, in one case, I'm using uh, both, uh, I don't know, uh, both platforms. And in another case, if I don't like the price even of one of them, I don't use them at all. Yeah, it's like si single homers. So that, mm. for, for example, you're selling some product and you... You don't really need to choose between platforms. You decide to join it. Yeah, you need to join both because you have some users on one platform, some users on another platform. So 
and you want to cover the the entire market. Uh, so yeah, and, and and then it's it's like, for example, if we are se selling, I don't know if the example with pizza will work. So, for example, we join the delivery club. I'm not sure how it works uh, exactly. So, if they use the different uh, services to deliver the food, so the, for example, Yandex, Yeda, and and delivery club. So then probably there can be different uh, users on that platform so that we want to cover both of them. And what will happen if we will disjoin the, the delivery club? So then we will just lose the, the part of the market. And if the platform will increase the price, we will not compare this to the uh, Yandex guitar because if if the users on the platform are different on the other side. So then we just lose the access to other users. So in, if it's still profitable to sell us the, the pizza on Delivery Club, we will still do it. And then if we are talking about the, the small uh, production of, I don't know, if we are talking about like some cake producers who make it like 10 cakes per, per week uh, with but some nice and expensive. So then you can probably find enough uh, consumers on both platforms, delivery and uh, okay, Yandex Gida is not uh, quite suitable for some premium product maybe. Uh, but yes, yeah, so then if price is bad, you can join another market and you can sell your 10 items there per week more easily so it's more about uh of the option uh for substitution of the platform yes so, so sites like the multi-homers they don't have any option to substitution because they they kind of need to connect both platforms and if you're talking about single homers they can substitute with another platform okay yeah, so if you go to more complicated example, we can think about different effects and different examples. So that's maybe too complicated generally. Okay, that's it for today. Do you have any questions about uh, the slides? Okay, then I stop recording. Will you send them to us, right? Slides, yeah, we'll, yes. they will be uploaded as, as usual to, to this lecture folder mm -hmm. and, yes, okay. and uh, the record as well. Yes, yeah, so like, let me remind you that this Friday we have the exercise session together, right? And this will be not in, in, in your shadow. So then in, in the shadow, you will have still. В общем, у вас в расписании все равно будет четыре лекции и в разное время. Но мы договорились, что вы подсоединитесь в час к одному одновременно. Окей? Да, окей. То есть с часа до четырех, ну, суммарно. Да. В общем... Проинформируйте всех, чтобы там не было людей, которые внезапно подключатся, когда я уже отключусь. Окей. Окей. See you Friday. Yes, thanks. Goodbye. Bye.